Okay, I'm going to see if I can use Google Meets to film some ACT prep videos for you all. Um, I do plan to put this on YouTube, so anyone who discovers this after the fact, um, we're currently in the middle of the COVID-19 coronavirus uh, quarantine and school's out, and I'm trying to help my students with ACT prep because I have several that we're still planning to take it again. That's all, of course, up in the air right now, and we'll, we'll see how it goes from here. All right, so this is the 2018-2019 ACT test booklet freely distributed by ACT. Uh, I'm a math teacher, really, so I'm going to be working part of the math problems. I would normally, of course, write in the book, but in case I mess up, I uh, don't have a second book with me, so I'm going to use some scratch paper. Marcus's favorite casserole recipe requires three eggs and makes six servings. Marcus will modify the recipe by using five eggs and increasing all other ingredients in the recipe proportionally. What is the total number of servings the modified recipe will make? Notice that I did not begin by reading the directions. The directions on the ACT here at the top are always the same for each test from year to year in recent history. So just know what these say because really this is still trying to waste a couple of your minutes. Um, there's very few problems where you actually need these comments or these directions. You, if you've ever taken a practice ACT test, you know how to take the ACT. So the important things here is that uh, three eggs gets you six servings from the first sentence. And I'm going to do it by a proportion since the problem says proportionally. And what about five eggs then? How many servings is that? And you could use the variable x and cross multiply. And that's what I would do in a harder problem, but it's number one, so it shouldn't be too bad. I noticed that three is half of six, so five is half of ten. 10 makes sense there, so I'm going to choose choice C on number two. The 35 member history club is meeting to choose a student government representative. The members decide that the representative who will be chosen at random cannot be any of the three officers of the club. What is the probability that Hiroko, who is a member of the club but not an officer, will be chosen? So Probability is, you know, wanted or target possibilities. Out of total possibilities. ACT, every bit of it is a reading test. They're trying to lose you in the reading here a little bit. There are 35 members, but three of those are officers and cannot be chosen. So really, you can only choose from 32 of the members. And Hiroko is just one person. So the probability that Hiroko is chosen among the uh, members who are not officers would be one out of 32, which is choice K. For what value of x is the equation 2 to the 2x plus 7 equal to 2 to the power of 15 true? Um, they're hoping this scares you away. Uh, the base of both problems is 2, so that doesn't matter. Really, you just care about when is 2x plus 7 equal to 15. So you would subtract 7, 2x is 8. You would divide by 2, x is 4. 
and that was what they were asking for u of x so four is choice b this would also be a problem where you could guess and check pretty efficiently number four Let the function f be defined as f of x equals 5x squared minus 7 parentheses 4x plus 3. What is the value of f of 3? So as long as you understand and know fun, or are familiar with function notation, this is a straightforward question. You do need to substitute and evaluate for, uh, sorry, 3 for x. So I'm just going to rewrite the function that they gave. Maybe I'll change that to a bracket so that there's not like parentheses, parentheses. And then it's an order of operations problem. So four times three is 12. 12 plus three is 15. But I need to multiply that by the, the negative seven. I'm gonna cheat a little bit and go ahead and do the three squared is nine. Do make sure you square the three before you multiply by the five. We can do both of these multiplications at the same time and get 45. Uh, seven times 10 is 70, seven times five is 35. So seven times 15 is 105, but we need to subtract that. Um, or you could have done this as a negative and then been adding a negative number. That's negative 60 which is choice J. Five. A wallet containing five $5 bills, seven $10 bills, and eight $20 bills, is found and returned to its owner. The wallet's owner will reward the finder with one bill drawn randomly from the wallet. What is the probability that this bill drawn will be a 20, $20 bill? So really I would have just underlined all the important bits of this while I was reading. But since I'm not writing my book, I had to like quickly summarize it. I want a 20 out of the total. There are eight 20s possible, and a total of eight and seven is 15 plus five more makes 20 total. And I would reduce that. Four goes into both. So that would be two and five. Two fifths is choice D. Number six, because I know this test fairly well, and our, the problem is a break-even word problem. There is almost always some kind of break-even word problem on there. The ABC Book Club charges a $40 monthly fee plus $2 per book in that month. The Easy Book Club charges a $35 monthly fee plus $3 per book read in that month. For each club, how many books must be read in one month for the total ch charges from each club to be equal. So we want ABC to equal EZ. And both of those companies are charging a monthly or sometimes called a flat fee plus a per whatever, in this case it's per book, fee. For ABC, it's 40 plus two per book. I'm just gonna use X for number of books. For easy, it's 35 plus $3 per book. I have students that will also work this problem by like thinking about the difference in the monthly fee in this case or the starting amount and the difference between the per unit amount and they can get the problem 
quick that way. So if you have good number sense and that works for you, that's fine. But a lot of people are more comfortable just setting up this break even uh, equation and solving. I like the first, so I'll subtract 2x on both sides. And then subtract off the 35. So for these to be equal, you would have to read five books, which is choice H. Seven's our first geometry question. Now it's really gonna pain me that I can't write on the diagram. The parallelogram A, B, C, D below. A, C is a diagonal. The measure of angle A, B, C is 40 degrees and the measure of angle A, C, D is 57 degrees. What is the measure of angle C, A, D? So a lot of these geometry problems, if there is a diagram, a huge chunk of the reading is just describing the diagram. So when you go back through it, AC is a diagonal. Well, that's, if, as long as you know what diagonal means, that's clear from the diagram. The measure of ABC is 40 degrees. That's in the diagram. The measure of ACD is 57 degrees. That's in the diagram. If you have trouble with these angle problems where there's the three letters, trace it in the order it gives from A to C, 2D, go back to the middle, that's what's 57 degrees. What is the measure of angle CAD? CAD, they even helpfully, because it's only number seven, mark that with an arc mark and a question mark so that you know which angle they wanted. Um, I'm gonna do a little, I'm working you know, these a little slower than I would be during the actual ACT is one, I'm explaining it to you, and two, I'm not working it in the book. So B, C, A, D. I know that angle's 40. I know that angle's 57. And I want this angle. I'm just gonna label it X. I'm gonna use a bit of a cheat. They said this was a parallelogram. And because it's a parallelogram, I know that this angle has to be the same as this angle. So I can cheat and move the 40 degrees to being over here as well. In which case, now I'm really just focused on a triangle where that angle's 57, that angle's 40, and I wanna figure out what that angle is. Well, you're supposed to know that a triangle always adds up to 180 degrees. And these two together would be 97. So if we just subtract that off from 180, I would cheat 180 minus 90 is 90. 90 subtract the seven is gonna be 83. And 83 is choice D on this question. Uh, sorry, part of that was off camera while I worked it. So getting used to this particular setup. I'm also sure that can be a little disorienting for you when I start flipping the page to get to the next part and get to some clean space. I'm only gonna go to the number in this video and then I'm gonna stop and watch it to make sure that it's not uh, completely bad quality. Number eight, when x equals one half, what is the value of 8x minus three or, or all over x? I know that some of you would just wanna grab your calculator or uh, maybe convert one half to 0 0.5, but this problem isn't that bad. We're just substituting in one half for both of these x's. Half of eight, it's order of operations problem. I'm gonna work on the numerator first. Half of eight is four. Four minus three is one. And this is a, even though it's a division by a fraction, it's a division you should be able to do. How many halves are in a whole? Two. Or if you did it as a decimal, 
how many times do you have to use 50 cents to get to a one dollar to or if it were a more complicated fraction I would remind you that one divided by one half, which is the same thing as this fraction up here, is the same thing as one times the reciprocal. And one times two over one would end up being two. And again, if you have to key it into the calculator, you just gotta be careful and make sure you get a key. This calculator doesn't know the problem you're trying to answer. Number nine, in the standard XY coordinate plane, what is the midpoint of the line segment that has endpoints 3, 8, and 1, negative 4? I'm going to doodle. I tell my students that the ACT always talks about this this way, the standard XY coordinate plane. Uh, they want you to spend like an extra half second every time you read that because they, they don't just say X, Y plane or coordinate plane. They want to say standard X, Y coordinate plane. Just take up a little time. They're going to say that they're trying to be more clear, but most people aren't going to be worried about, wait a minute, what coordinate plane do you mean? 3, 8. Just kind of doodle in this right in there. 1, negative 4. Somewhere right in there. So the middle of this looks to be somewhere in that vicinity. So I'm expecting it to be positive, positive. And if you glance at the choices, that gets rid of a couple of the choices. Negative, negative doesn't seem quite right. It looks like it's way too close to this point. But we can do better than that. We can look at the X coordinates that we had, which are one, Oh, I drew my picture wrong. I about got myself starting over. Three, eight. I did negative one, negative four. And one, negative four. Looks like that. And the middle would be somewhere right in here. Still positive, positive. But now I know just from a glance that the negative negative offerings are just complete, utter trash. There's no way the middle of this is way over here. So they're hoping that you don't even think about the picture and that you just do some, some kind of math and get wrong signs. All right, the ordered pair is three, eight, and one, negative four. And we want, And the middle of one and three is positive two. And if you look at the answer choices, only one of them has an X coordinate of positive. I'm choose D and just move on. Taking this for real. But if you were not in a situation where you were able to do that and you actually did need to find the middle of negative four and eight, you might be able think about it and eventually decide that that's positive two and positive two is six away from eight and six away from negative four and if you can't think of it that way there's a couple different ways you can do the math but the one that you would be probably most likely to remember is that you find the average of two numbers by adding them together and dividing by two and if you do that for the eight and the negative four, you will get the positive two. Um, I think on the ACT, it's pretty common, especially this early in the test, that you can get it just by thinking about, well, I know the middle of one and three is two. And one or two choices, and maybe thinking about the coordinate plane eliminates one of the other choices as well. All right, last problem for right now, number 10. And again, if you're having a little trouble reading this, that's the 2018-2019 uh, practice ACT prep booklet that's freely available on ACT's website. You can download a PDF from their website for this. 
the fluctuations of water depth at a pier is shown in the figure below. One, I would point out that they are, tr again, trying very hard. They hope that fluctuation pier water depth and that you're just already like, oh, my gosh, what's this problem going to be about? You look at this and you say, oh, there's a graph. Oh, wait, I've never really done graphs that look like waves. And you just pick a number and move on. But it ain't that bad. One of the following value gives the positive difference. And difference here is a key word. You're supposed to know that difference means that maybe you're going to end up doing some kind of subtraction. In feet between the greatest water depth and the least water depth. Uh oh, or sorry, shown in this graph, which value is it? Well, if you look, high tide, so to speak, lines up vertically with a depth of 12 feet. And low tide, so to speak, here and here, lines up with the depth of six feet. And if you subtract, that's a difference of six feet, which is choice G. All right, well, that's problems one through 10 from the 2018, 2019 ACT. I'm going to uh, stop presenting, stop recording, go see how this goes. I've never actually used Google Meet to intentionally create um, help videos rather than it being some um, So I just want to see how the quality ends up looking and those kinds of things. And stop recording. Bye for now.